and Indiana here with another episode of the Star Wars podcast. Today's episode is about Grand Admiral Thrawn, who I could talk about forever. This will probably be the longest episode. So, let's get down to it, since this is going to be so long, apparently. Uh, this character was created by Timothy Zahn in as a villain in the famous Thrawn trilogy, first seen in the first book in the trilogy, Heir to the Empire, in 1991. So, the character's true name was Mithra Naruto, and he was from the Chiss Ascendancy. The Chiss Ascendancy was a government in the section of the Unknown Regions. He... And he was from the plant Casila in that area. And he ended up dying in 9 ABY at, I think it was called the Battle Bilbringi. Either way, is it at a battle at the Bilbringi shipyards? So, let's get to it. He started out as a commoner among his people and was able to rise to the ranks of the just ascendancy's military, space, navy, whatever you call it. He rose to the ranks, ended up getting a pretty good position. Um, and then he made a deal with Palpatine whenever he encountered him due to some stuff going on. Palpatine sent some whoever's out there and he ended up encountering him. Anyways, he made a deal with Palpatine in 27 BBY to destroy the outbound flight project in order to pre- prevent them from coming in contact with the user and Vong. This is also when he first meets George Kaboth, not the clone, but the true George Kaboth who he kills in outbound flight. That's how he knows later on that the George Kaboth he encounters help him with the Empire is actually a clone because he knew the real George Kaboth. So, anyways, he ended up being exiled from his own people because he had a method of preventative strikes against people he saw as enemies. The problem is his people didn't believe in attacking until they were attacked. So, if they if he goes ahead, tax people that he believes are threats. Um, there's an example now. I'll fly. I forgot who they were called, but he then went on and attacked them. So he ends up being exiled because he keeps on doing this, even though it's unaccepted among his people. Um, eventually, though. Thrawn is found, not by his own people, but by a captain in the Imperial Army by the name of Voss Park on the Star Destroyer Strikefast, who he took to see Palpatine. So, Park essentially finds him on this planet. He has some stormtroopers die to him and whatnot. Um, this happens in a short story called Miss Encounters, and, um, ends up, Thrawn is able to get on one of the Imperial shuttles, it gets on the Star Destroyer where he's captured, and Park admires him for his tactile genius or whatnot in the situation, and takes him to Palpatine. Thrawn ends up quickly climbing the ranks of the Imperial Army because of his great tactical mind. He ends up becoming the only non-human Grand Admiral. The thing is, there were 13 Grand Admirals. Now, of all of them, one of them was not human, and that was Grand Admiral Thrawn, who we're talking about here, and who was part of the Chiss. And, um, 
this is quite an achievement because Palpatine was someone who believed in human rule and that humans were superiors over others, especially the males. So often you didn't see many females or aliens in high ranks in his armies. It was often male humans, though females and alien species could theoretically rise if they were smart enough. And Thrawn was one of them. But, however, Thrawn ends up going on a journey to the Unknown Regions that leaves him out of the way during the Battle of Endor. He is not in the known part of the galaxy during that time, and he stays there for about five more years until he reappears to Admiral Paleon. No, at the time, Captain Paleon. And, um... No one really knows what he was doing during that time. Theoretically, he took some of the um, captains he worked with, like Voss Park and whatnot, with them to unknown regions. He likely did some stuff with his own people then. Um, think one of the things Thrawn was most well known for, if you knew him personally, especially was Thrawn would study art. The reason he studied art was to understand a species. Because he felt when he truly understood a species, because you could understand a species by studying their art, because it would be somewhat unique to them, he could get some insights to that species' beliefs and culture that could give him a benefit, a tactical benefit over them and be able to fit his strategy to the species or plant he was attacking. Which to me makes him really fearful because who wants to go against an enemy who knows all your weaknesses that you yourself may not be completely aware of? Um, for example, he put a whole planet into fear just because he was able to act like he got through their planetary shielding and was able to capture a whole planet without firing a single shot. Actually, two planets, because he pulled this off later on with another one. For the Republic found out what he was doing. Um, also, what I have to say is there was only one species that Thrawn didn't correctly predict what they were like through their art. However, that species no longer exists. That alien group, because Thrawn defeated them. Which to me makes him pretty fearful because if there's one group that you didn't understand but they're still dead, you don't want to mess with them. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. To me, I think he could easily have defeated the Emperor through tactical strength. Um, When Thrawn reappeared, he made Palin on his sort of understudy studied under him uh, and whatnot while he was on board the Chim Chimera, which was his um, primary ship. It was the ship he stayed on, took residence during his control of the Empire. His plan was to rebuild the Empire in a stable form, and it would be more alien-friendly. All he wanted was a stable form of government, and he felt the best way to do it was through and the Empire, but not the sort of empire that Vader and Palpatine run, ran. He also didn't exactly punish people as such as Vader and the Emperor did. The Vader and the Emperor would kill the um, higher officials if they made any mistakes. However, 
Theron himself didn't kill the higher officials if they made mistakes. He may have killed the lower ones who actually made the mistakes. But also, even if the situation didn't go perfectly like he wanted, if the lower official was in innovative in his effects to try to stop or to help out, he may rise that official through the ranks as he recognizes they may be of more benefit to him. So he is really an admiral fellow, though at the same time very scary. It's not a guy you want to be on his bad side. Um, Thrawn was killed, as I said, in 9 ABY at the Battle of Bilbringi. He was killed by a um, Nogri warrior called Rook. The Nogri were a um, group of people that the Empire took advantage of. Invader ended up giving them to Thrawn as sort of a use as a weapon or a tool or a people to take advantage of. And they were great warriors, but they had complete control of them because their planet was in ruins from the Clone Wars. And they relied on the Empire in order to make a living. Um, uh, some other important things to know about Thrawn is that he supposedly had a hand of Thrawn, or a clone. What really happens with this clone is kind of unknown. Uh, I believe Zahn at one point wanted to write a book about the clone, but that may be more difficult now with the canon stuff. I should have mentioned earlier, but Thrawn is a non-canon character from the expanded universe, so he is not officially, he is a legend. Um, also, in about 20 ABY, Moff Dissera forms a triumvirate, and the triumvirate is him as the political leader, Flim as the con man, and Major Tyrus as the tactician. The point is, is they're trying to throw a con over Imperial officials that Thrawn has come back to life so that the Imperial may be revived and to kind of scare people and to kind of get the Imperials with some hope that there's still a chance. But the truth is, it's not actually Grand Admiral Thrawn. But the fact that people think it's Grand Admiral Thrawn, and they're able to pull it off, is very effective, because Grand Admiral Thrawn was quite feared. So, tell me if there's anything I missed. Give me ideas for the next podcast. This is Indiana, signing out. See you later.